We're using Yahoo uh, positions. You know, maybe your league is a little different. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, uh, that's what we're going to be using here. And uh, let's get that up on the screen. And there you see uh, potential candidates to fill out the top 10 there. And uh, we will fill them in as we go along here. Uh, and you see the list of names there. Uh, for me, to kick things off, in a situation where Leon Dreisaitl has left wing eligibility, it was really tough for me to put uh, somebody ahead of him. I know Artemi Panarin had a really strong year last year. Maybe a slight step back there, and then there is the contract year factor with Dreisaitl. So for me, I would put him as the top left wing uh, if you're going to graph uh, for that position. Uh, I mean, I, I guess. Here's the thing with winger eligibility, right? Especially a lot of centermen can play wing. You know, McDa McDavid and Dreisaitl play together so much. I won't fault people who have dry sidle as a winger i personally don't to me he's a centerman he is now he is a centerman first and a winger second um so if he would be ranked first yes that would not be crazy i will also make the same argument for jack hughes jack hughes has been a centerman his entire life like all of a sudden he became a winger like no but i can understand dry sidle being at the top that's there's no question about that in my mind. Yeah, if he's on this list, you got to put him at number one. Um, Daily Faceoff has him as the uh, center there, but like you said, you know, one of the best to do it. And if he's on this list, he's got to be your number one. Yeah, again, going by Yahoo rankings because that's what we've been uh, using uh, throughout. You know, once we get away from the ESPN mocks, so. They have him eligible as a left wing. Maybe next year that goes away. Maybe the same thing for Jack Hughes as more of a true center. Um, but, you know, if they're eligible there, you can certainly play them there. If you decide to hold, hold off on centers and want to stack those and you don't, or you hold off on left wings or whatever reason, that's the reason they you can play those guys there. So are we okay uh, throwing Mr. Dreisaitl in the top spot? I'm okay with that. All righty. So then there we go. So then second on the list. I had Artemi Panarin, which as far as traditional left wings go, to me, it's either him or Kaprizov, uh, Kaprizov as the, your, your top left wings there. I don't know which direction you guys went, but that, that those would be the two I would consider for that spot. I have Kirill Kaprizov in the number two spot. Nothing to not to take anything away from Artemi Panarin. I think last year was his first year where – we saw the shot volume go up a little bit. We saw the goal volume go up a little bit. Like, is that is that really him, though? I don't know. But it's no secret for Kirill Kaprizov. So that's where I was taking it. In, in a league, let's say that values maybe goals a little bit more. Uh, not that like Kaprizov throws his weight around anymore, but Panarin's not hitting anything. So I, I went with Kaprizov at two. Yeah, this was a tough one for me between the two. I went with Panarin, uh, one of only nine forwards to have over 300 shots on goal last season. I think that's a big deal, if especially if you're going to get a category that counts for that. Uh, he had 302 last year, so that that's why I put him there. It was uh, way above, I think, what Kaprizov had, but I had Kaprizov at third. Uh, like Chris said, he kind of is the total package because he also provides hits. He also provides blocks, which is important. But uh, I think coming off of last year, uh, especially when you think of just a regular season, uh, what Panarin provided uh, could be huge mo moving forward for, for the Rangers. And if Lafreniere takes another step and they keep that line of Trocek, Panarin, and him together, I mean, he had 71 assists last year, 33 of those coming on the power play, so just a, you know, essentially half, a little less than that. So, I mean, I, does he, you know, he had 49 goals last year. Can he get to 50? Does he take a little bit of a step back? I mean, 120 points. He had never gotten close to the, the closest he had gotten to that in the previous season was 96, uh, two years prior with the Rangers. So I, a little bit of a step back there, but I, 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 the homer in me leans Rangers. So that's why Panarin two, Kaprizov three is the way I went on my list. Yeah. I wouldn't be upset of it going either way. That's how close it was for those two guys, for sure. I'm I'm fine with that. I will I will live with it. I've been outvoted. 
You've been outvoted, so there we go. So no surprises here so far in the top three amongst Yahoo eligible left wings. Uh, so there we go. Dry Sidle, Panarin, Kaprizov. So now this is probably where the list starts to maybe deviate amongst us a little bit here. Uh, so well, one of the guys you could consider is Brady Kachuk or Matthew Kachuk or Jack Hughes or even Zach Hyman, who's both left and right wing eligible on my list. I put Brady Kachuk because he also shoots the puck a ton and he also is one of the biggest hitters in the league. We're talking banger league here. You know, and listen, I know Matthew Kachuk throws his body around too, but just Brady Kachuk seems to just do it at a uh, much higher uh, pace. Yeah, I have the same thing as well. I mean, Brady, maybe the points aren't as high as his brother. Maybe the upside playing with Florida is, is you know, is, is there for Matthew, not for Brady. But like you said, I mean, he... He just shoots the puck a ton. He hits everything. It's it's you know if if you're in a league or penalty bet, it's count as well. You know he's you know he's gonna get a, a a ten misconduct at some point for running his mouth or chirping the player and getting thrown out late in the game for something. So he's he's a stat stuffer. He will stat he will stuff every category that you have, and you need a guy like that. It's instead of trying to piece those players together to get what he does. You can use one pick and you have that player. So I have no problem with Brady being in that spot. As much as a homer I want to be for Jack Hughes, and I think we've talked about this a couple of times already. For me, he gets moved down on the list because of health concerns, especially when it comes to, you know, drafting top 10 in fantasy. If this guy, I, I don't know, he's been hurt every year that he's been in the league. So that's why I have my concerns. Obviously, he has the talent to be at the top there, uh, at the top of the list. But right now, he is not up four, or I don't even have him top five. Uh, I agree with you guys. It's Brady Kachuk. Uh, I talked about shots on goal with Panarin. He had 357 shots on goal, fourth among forwards. Big thing for him as well. Hits, right? 270. He's second among forwards in that. That's, that's big category. These are categories you want to hone in on especially when you're not getting the top guys in dry sidle, when you're not getting Connor McDavid, uh, these are the type of categories you want to hone in on. If you, you're, you're not going to get the goals, the assists, that's something. And he provides a little bit of everything. So uh, Matt, uh, Brady Kachuk, number four for me. Brady Kachuk's a guy that when I'm drafting towards the end of the round and I've got that turn, yeah. I want him with one of my first two picks. And yep. I, that, you know, that's usually the case. Like to me, like, Kachuk Makar in that area. If you match to get two of those, now you got something to build. Now you got something to work off of. So there we go. So no real arguments here. And I do see Oliver Phillips comment in the chat. Can you post the link for the mock draft? We'd we'll love, we'll love to join. We would love you to join too, but we don't have the mock draft link yet because Yahoo only goes about 10 minutes out. So we still need a little time here, but we will post that link in here when it is ready to rock. Uh, so top four here, pretty uh, consensus top four uh, amongst the three of us here. Uh, is it as simple as putting uh, Brady's brother at five for the aforementioned Jack Hughes injury concerns is why he would not be up there. Another guy who could make an argument at five, I wouldn't, is Zach Hyman. I think he's coming up in the next couple, but uh, I I'd take Matthew Kachuk over Hyman there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm okay with that. Absolutely. I, I, have no, I do not have Jack Hughes ranked here because to me, he's a centerman. I get that I get that he has a left with eligibility. I tried to stay as true to this as possible. So I don't have him ranked. And there's my apologies to you, Jack Hughes. You are a centerman. So and this could be the last year we see him with left wing eligibility. I mean, that I feel like that's one thing with fantasy hockey is some leagues it's too loosey goosey with the position eligibility. And then some of them it's like, all right, you know, the guy has played there enough that he should have it and it doesn't happen. So I mean it goes both ways, but uh, so now we, we've got through our top five. I don't think there are any surprises here. I don't think any arguments from anybody. Um, if you want to swap that order around a little, be my guess. But I think that your top five are locked in right there. Now we get to six. Uh, for me, this is where I, I know we spoke about uh, Jack Hughes uh, with the position availability. Um, this is where I have him just outside the top five. Um, you, you can make you put Zach Hyman there. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily have an argument with like a Philip Forsberg or an Elias Pettersson, but I mean, those are the guys in the mix here. So I don't know what you guys had for six, but that's what I had. You said Hughes six. Yeah. I have uh Zach Hyman six. 
Okay. Uh, 54 goals, third amongst uh, all forwards. Pretty big there. He's going to get top line minutes, uh, especially on the power play. You got McDavid beside him. You got Nugent Hopkins beside him. I, I think Hyman is going to take a, another, you know, leap here and he'll, I, I put him at six. I have Forsberg at six. I mean, Nashville went out to get a whole bunch of weapons. And I know sometimes people are worried that you're going to multiply by divide here. But I think this takes Nashville's offense to a whole other level now. Like now you have some legitimate threats. Forsberg is adding pieces like to his arsenal, I would say, because you're going out to get guys who can make you even better. He is really good to start with. He can score goals. He can rack up points. He also takes a ton of shots. And if if everybody's expectation is that Nashville is going to be a better team, then that means that Forsberg is going to be a better player as well. He just has more weapons, and he just has an opportunity to play with better players. So to me, I think he could be a player who at least flirts with 100 points. So if he's the sixth man off the board to me, in, in my mind, Dreisaitl, Panarin, and, and Kaprizov could all be 100-point players. I will give Matthew Kachuk the benefit of the doubt as well because you know he can. Brady, I don't know, but he makes up for it because he shoots the puck, because he hits. So to me, the next guy after that is Forsberg. That's just who I have in, you know, in my mind. To also go off your point about Forsberg is he produced what he produced last year as basically the only line that Nashville could really go out there. So they were getting the focus of the other team's top pairings, shut down lines. Now, you know, however, so whoever Stamkos plays with on the the other line of their in their top six, now they're going to have to decide where to shift their attention a little bit. So I agree. I think Forsberg's production should go. I'm not going to say it should go up, but it sh he should be right around the level he was last year, and it wouldn't be surprising if it went up a little bit. So. I'm okay with putting Forsberg six for that reason. Where did you have? Did you have him on your top ten, Adam? I did have Forsberg on my top ten. I had him down at because I had Hughes in there. I had Forsberg at eight, but I think maybe that was a little low for him. Yeah, so did I. I had Forsberg at eight as well, and I'll go through the stats with him. Top six in goals, forty-eight. Top five in shots on goal, three hundred forty-seven. Uh, over a hundred hits. I mean. He's a top line guy, so yeah, definitely belongs on this top ten list. I wouldn't be upset if you put him at six either. So, and I also think Chris needs one here. I mean, Chris has been giving us so much on this list so far. Let, let's give him Philip Forsberg. Yeah, we hey, hey, thanks guys for tossing me the boat here. Thanks. All right, so we, we'll, we'll put Forsberg six. There's a lot of reasons to think that he could move up and, and be just outside that top five. Are we, do we want to throw Zach Hyman here for all the aforementioned reasons, with being in the Edmonton top six, the power play, no reason to think he's not going to produce at that level again this year. Everybody cool with putting Zach Hyman seven. Absolutely. Yes. I'm excited to see him score from within three inches of the blue paint. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's not going to be a lot of highlight reel Zach Hyman goals. He's going to score goals the way like a guy like I might score on my Thursday night, you know, rec league. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, there's no style points. There's no judges going 5.6, 5.9. No, no. It's, if you don't think three inches is a lot, just ask Zach Hyman what he can do with that. He is just popping goals from around it. He doesn't, you know what? You don't even have to put it off his stick, put it off his body. He doesn't care how. They don't ask you how, they ask you how many. And Zach Hyman had a lot of those. So now we're now now I think we're where we're gonna get a little hairy here because you still got Jack Hughes on the board, Stamkos on the board, Kyle Connor, Alex Ovechkin. Uh, you know, a lot of names that could be thrown into the top 10. Jason Robertson, Jake Gensel, Elias Pedersen. Uh, I still, where, where do we think about going eight here? Because the only guys that are remaining in my top 10 that are not been ranked yet are Jack Hughes, Elias Patterson, and I did put Alex Ovechkin 10th over some other guys that maybe people would think are more worthy. But the reason I have Alex Ovechkin in my top 10 is you know they're going to feed him the puck even more than they do because they are trying to get him to that record. So he is going to, yeah. if you think he's been shooting the puck a lot in his career, wait till this year. See the bottom of this this whole situation. I I was struggling with. Um, I, I had Jack Hughes at seven, but I'm willing to take him out of the list because he'll be centering the line with Meyer and Mercer surrounding him. So uh, you know, Ovechkin I had at ten. Like you said, he's going to be a part of both power play units. Uh, he gets over 150 hits as well. So. I mean, he's got to be on this list. And I also had I had Carter Verhage at number nine because uh, of the minutes he's going to get, and he's going to be playing with uh, Barkov and Reinhardt. And then at uh, 
I had on the outskirts uh, Steven Stamkos, who I'm willing to throw in, in the top 10 there. I had Jake Gensel here at eight. Um, I think he is going to a very good team. Uh, he can score goals, right? He, he he scored a lot of goals playing with Sidney Crosby. He went to Carolina, and I think he did a very good job. But again, and it's really hard to follow up. But Sebastian Ajo is not Sidney Crosby, obviously. So that's, you know, through no fault of Sebastian Ajo, he's great centerman, but... Like Crosby makes everybody better. And I feel that's the same conversation for playing with Nikita Kucherov. Like Nikita Kucherov had a hundred apples. So if even if they don't play together five on five, if they play on the power play together, I mean Gensel can rip it. So Kucherov and his creativity and the way he facilitates the puck. Let's say Tampa Bay wants to load up on a top line and they go with point in the middle, Kucherov on one side, Gensel on the other. Like you're not stopping that line. You're hoping they don't hurt you. So I think Jake Gensel, I don't know if he's going to get 100 points, but I think he could at least flirt with 50 goals, maybe 95 points. 50 goals, 45 assists, 275, 300 shots. That's To me, that's top 10 worthy. That's within the realm of what you want to see. I had him flirting in the top 10. I had him just missing out. The one argument I will make for Elias Patterson is that we got some comments that there was some disrespect in our center rankings towards him, and I agree. Uh, maybe a little disrespect there. He does have that left wing eligibility, true center kind of deal again, like Hughes. Um, I think you know if if we're going to talk of the remaining three here for top ten, I got no problem with putting Gensel in there. I got no problem with putting Ovechkin in there. If we're going to take Hughes out of the argument entirely, I mean, I don't know. I think Pedersen's got to get in there because then once you get past those guys, you know, it's, it becomes Verhage, Stamkos, Connor, Svechnikov, Kreider, Robertson. Like, they're all kind of – if you get one or the other, it's all roughly the same. So, you know, I, I, I'm okay with those being the three we put in and then however we rank them, we rank them. I look, I, I get it, Elias. I, I'm about to. Canuck fans are going to love me. I, I get it, but like there's just too much inconsistency in his game right now. There's too much inconsistency. I'm sorry. It's, and look, I'm not saying that 80 some odd points is not 89 points, 90 points is not great, but <clears throat> he doesn't shoot the puck a ton here. How much did he finish with last season in, in shots? He had a, uh, no, it's all right. He had a little bit more. 207. It's not great, okay? It's There are a lot of ticks down. I get that his shooting average also came down as well. I I think he's a centerman to start with. He's not a winger. And I think he played wing because they tried to get him going a little bit more. He doesn't hit, right? He doesn't block shots. He, he, he doesn't do a lot outside of if he's not getting points. And now with his shot total regressing a little bit, like if, if he gets 200 shots, that's good. But it's not elite. To me... Elite has got to be flirt. Like, unless I, I know Zach Hyman doesn't have a ton of shots, but I mean, man's popping goals, right? So I, I'm just not, I, I don't have Elias Patterson in the top 10. It's not because I think he's a center. I just don't think he is better than any of those names ahead of him. He doesn't, he doesn't stuff any category completely. And I can find, I can find an elite winger who can have more upside than Elias Patterson right now. Yeah, I, I'm taking Hughes, Stamkos. I'm taking Verhage. I'm even taking Ovechkin. I think uh, even Gensel. Uh, look at the line he's on. I think I'm taking them all over Pedersen. If it if it's if it has to do with left wings for sure. All right, the mock draft's gonna go in about six minutes. Here, link is in the chat, so make sure you get in there for that eight team mock. Uh, there I am sitting, waiting at the seven spot, just near the turn. I see Chris pop in at the four. Uh, so before we uh, go crazy with that, let's uh, try and wrap this up here. So uh, I, I so Jake Gensel, Alex Ovechkin are two of the guys we're, we're going to put in here, correct? Chris, you guys want to if if you want to put Ovechkin there, you can. I just didn't have him in the top ten. I right. get he, he's he's slowing down a little bit. Father time is here, and I know he hits. I just don't think he can maintain the pace that he needs to maintain, right? I need a guy who's going to flirt with 40-plus goals, 
right? 90 plus points, 300 plus shots. I don't know if Ovechkin can do all that, but I think what saves him a little bit here is that he hits, but I'm not drafting Ovechkin so he can hit. I'm drafting Ovechkin because I need goals. So if you want to drink the Kool-Aid and say, hey, the Washington Capitals are going to do everything to get him to where he needs to be, I certainly hope so because that's the that's a, quite the hill you got to die on, though. Um, but I will live with that. I will give Ovi his flowers. All right. So uh, as you see there, I've plugged in Gensel at 8 and Ovechkin at 10. So where are we going to put – who are we putting at number 9? Who, who, who is your suggestion to put at 9? Because Patterson's out, Hughes is out, so my top 10 are gone. If I had to pick from who's remaining – it would be you know between Stamkos, Verhage, Kyle Connor. I mean, I want to put. I I, I think I'm big on Clayton Keller this season, but I, I don't know if I could put him in the top ten. No love for Jason Robertson. He would be another guy too, but I feel like you know him, Kreider. Like you know, you start to get like what they're the same thing. So how do you pick one over the other? I mean, Robertson's a little Chris bit young. Kreider but... is not Jason Robertson. So oh, okay, fair enough. But all right, fine. You want to you want to make the argument for Jason Robertson at number nine over Ovechkin. Jason Robertson could be a hundred point player. He came down a little bit. I get it. Okay, I get it. He came down. That's fine. I also think the infu- like I want Wyatt Johnson to play center, and I want Jason Robertson to be on his wing because I think Wyatt Johnson's going to be a better player, right? And if we expect him to to take off. I hope he's dragging Robertson with him. Nothing against Rupe Hintz. Homie is hurt every second day. And I just think, yes, with, with the loss of Pavelski, that's going to hurt. I would like to see a line of Wyatt Johnson, Jason Robertson, and Stank Oven. That I mean, maybe they're too young, so that doesn't happen because that, that's a tough matchup for them. But Jason Robertson can shoot the puck. I think it was a little bit of a down year for him. I get it. But he has done it before, and he has the volume to get it done again. So that's that's where I go. It was either him or Kyle Connor, and I don't know for Kyle Connor yet. I, I want to love him. I w- I would have put Kyle Connor like ten instead of Ovechkin, but I'll live with the consensus of the group here. So if I have to pick one, my argument is for Jason Robertson here. All right. It, you sold me, and I, I mean, and he's one of those guys that maybe I'm overlooking a little too much. I'm not taking him in a lot of mock drafts, not out of just just it, he's not there when it, he comes on the clock. So maybe a guy I'm overlooking and maybe should do a little more on. But yeah, I got no problem with putting him in the top ten. So there we go, running through our top ten left wings, and we'll do the top ten right wings on Total Hockey now next week. Uh, so make sure you tune in for that. Uh, we have Leon Drysaitel among the Yahoo eligible left wings. Leon Drysaitel one. Artemi Panarin, two. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov at three. Brady Kachuk at four. Matthew Kachuk at five. Philip Forsberg at six. Zach Hyman at seven. Jake Gensel at eight. Jason Robertson at nine. And Alex Ovechkin as he guns for that record in the 10th spot. There's certainly some other guys in there that we could have put in. Uh, tell us who you would have put uh, put in and uh, included or taken out. We'd love to hear that. Let us know at Total Hockey Now on our YouTube, Twitter. 